Welcome back to my channel everybody. Today I'm gonna be talking about a fuel problem that I experienced not too long ago. There was this truck that came from different shops and uh, they couldn't fix it. Uh, it cranked non-start. So uh, they replaced a couple components, they replaced fuel filters, a fuel module, fuel pump, and still the problem was there. Um, uh, they use uh, a starting fluid and the you know engine will start but um, once uh, the starting fluid uh, was ended uh, the vehicle just shut down the engine just shut down so um, today I'm going to explain you how to find problems like that using the DDL software many of you have asking me how to use um, a DDL software over the time and today I'm going to try to start doing that to know uh, to show you where you can find different information on the DDL software um, uh, keep on mind right now then I am not showing you the actual motion of the truck it is based on what I did what I want to show you the computer saves you know the uh, logs that's what it's called. Um, when you hook the computer to a truck, it says it screen record everything automatically. And that is what we're gonna be using to uh, show you this event that happened to the truck. So um, I wanna have you come closer here to these uh, injectors. These are the injectors of a DD15 engine. And as you can see, they don't look any different at all. But uh, there is something unusual. You can see the tip of the injector looks all rusted. And it is not just this one, it looks the same for all of them. Um, it looks all rusted for all of them. They all look the same. See how rusted they look. So um, these problems you are not going to find them just like that, just because you are going to open the injectors and the problem is going to be there. That is going to be by luck. If that happens but the uh, the problem then uh, we had as I said before you crank but the engine doesn't start so uh, the situation was this the truck was sitting for almost two years so within two years a lot of things can happen um, of course if the engine has no issues at all like uh, there were no issues before uh, there the, 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 the aren't supposed to be any issues right now, uh, probably some minor details here and there but something like this, like rusted injectors like these are not going to happen because we have diesel here, we don't have water but uh, in the case of this truck that was the issue so how to find a problem like this using the DDL software that is what I'm going to show you so that's, that's the reason why I have the computer here with the DDL software so we are going to click OK, but we are not going to connect to any truck because we are not hooked to the USB link. So we're going to close all this and we're going to go here, see files, and we're going to open a lock. This is where you are going to see what other trucks you have worked on in the past. See how many trucks I have over here that I worked in the past. These are all trucks that have been working in the past. Too many and it will, it will delete the ones that are older than a specific time. See, this is a 3, 2, 21, and we are right now at a 5, 1, um, 21. So the truck that I work on and then had the problem is this one right here, the big number FR6210. Uh, so we click on it and we say, okay, so we can see what we did on the truck. And we just wait a little until this loads. It, it, sometimes it can take a little longer depending on how big the file is. And so we're gonna do play right now. And it's gonna start loading. You can see, it, it looks like we are connected to a truck, but we are not connected to a truck at all. We are just like running this based on the memory, internal memory of the computer. One thing very important when you are looking for problems like this is for fault codes. This truck specifically didn't have any fault codes, no 
cuts active and that was the reason why other shops couldn't fix it because there was no a fault cut that was active um, they were all inactive which is harder to understand why is the problem so if we go to fall cut right now and i try to see the fall cut that this uh, vehicle had at the moment there is no active fall cuts uh, waiting for it to load takes a second okay See, there is just this code over here, engine-wise, the engine control. So we have this code over here, fuel rail pressure too high, which is very unusual because when the engine doesn't want to start, there is no pressure at all. And if this engine doesn't start and it has high pressure, that is something completely off. There is something weird about it. But anyway, so what i did is this i went by i went to the instrumentation and i went to user over here and over here i'm going to pull the specific readings that i want to see then are rail the desired rail pressure which is this one right here the actual pressure thing is this one and the deviation pressure that is going to tell me what is the uh pressure then is uh between the actual pressure and the computer request pressure now we are just going to uh go and uh look for let me pause this here okay right here so you understand my point right there so uh when i look for the low pressure which is the fuel L O whatever this one right here L P P O fuel pressure this is the low pressure this is the pressure of the fuel filters click on it then we also going to get the engine speed engine speed uh, see actual uh, okay let me get it engine is actual engine speed right here all right so i pause it right here because i can see the the key points that i want to show you right now the key points are here engine speed is cranking right now the cranking speed is pretty low it's 9 99 rpms which is pretty low a healthy cranking speed should be around 150 to 200 but that is um, a weak battery or something like that that is not a big concern the low pressure side this one right here we have 28 pounds of pressure which is normal this should be all right because we are cranking the engine so the pressure is not going to be that high as maximum this pressure gotta be around like 110 120 depending on the year and model they vary 80 for the old, oldest ones and the newest ones are going to be like 100 and plus but there is an issue over here we are cranking the engine and we only have 999 uh, uh, rpms on it and we have 500 bars of pressure this is a high pressure like a super high pressure this is a pressure that only is going to happen when the engine is running so when the engine is running at 600 rpm or more the pressure is going to be around this but in this case the engine speed is pretty low and we are getting a high as pressure over here which is not normal and if we look at the desired pressure right here let me make this one bigger so we can get a bit of a look so we look at the desired pressure here the desired pressure is 200 in order to start the truck the computer is asking only for 200 bars but we are getting 500 bars which is not normal what this means it means that the pressure is getting is not leaking everywhere the pressure is building but it is not getting released that is what it means so when something like that happens the first thing you are going to think let's replace the sensor the fuel pressure sensor the rail in this case in this case i have it somewhere right here 
this is the fuel rail pressure and I did replace it because I have some used ones then I uh, I had for diagnostics and stuff like that so I swapped the um, old fuel uh, I'm, I'm the the one that was installed on the engine and uh, I did crank it again and it didn't change the problem was still the same as you can see it right here it didn't change at all so after replacing the fuel sensor what else is to replace it is the pressure limiting valve this is the pressure limiting valve this is the one that goes on the rear area of the rail the rail is located like this this is the rear area of the engine so this valve what it's going to do is to release excessive pressure then the engine doesn't need so by removing this valve and replacing it with a new one the problem should go away because if this one is stuck close it's not going to release the pressure then the engine doesn't need then the engine once is starting doesn't need so I did replace this little valve over here and the problem persisted. The pressure was still building up with no reason. And we are not getting enough uh, cranking speed to get this much pressure. So definitely we have an issue right there, a point where to start. So there is two components that are the easy ones to access so the other components that are going to be after you know then these components are good are the injectors because these components are the ones that are going to control the fuel pressure in the high area the high fuel pressure over 5000 psi this is the area where everything is going to control the fuel limiting valve the fuel sensor fuel rail sensor and the injectors with the computer as well too but after removing the injectors right i was able to see then this was the reason why we are getting high pressure because the injector is getting pressurized from the rail and this is not leaking anywhere it is not getting released to the needle and it's not getting released to the return points, which are these two. So that means then the injector inside suffered a damage because probably there was water contamination on the diesel when the engine was stopped. At the moment that the engine was stopped, probably the, the diesel got some a, a liter or, or maybe water on it. I have no idea. but when you turn off the engine and you left it like that the corrosion of the water start working around the injector and destroying the injector components especially inside outside there is no problem it can be rusted like this but inside yes there is a problem even though then we know that this one is an electronic injector doesn't mean that it doesn't work mechanically inside there is mechanical components then open and close the flow of the injector in different directions when you insert when you apply the pressure over here to the main line which is this one then goes all the way down to where is needed the most then is the needle for the injection on the combustion chamber because we have an internal damage and this one got stuck um, the inject the fuel wasn't leaking anywhere so the fuel was getting push inside the injector but it's not was not getting released anywhere and we weren't releasing anywhere over here too so that's the reason why sometimes we were getting up, up to like 1000 like for example if i reverse this one right here see right here we're getting 40 right so once we start like cranking it even more so we got 500 see and then we got 500 see the engine speed see now we stop the engine and the pressure is still high because it's not getting anywhere and um, that is uh, the reason why we find out then the injectors were bad so uh, 
I don't know if you get the point of this video, but I'm trying to uh, explain you the best I can when it comes to explain you how to use the DDL software and how to understand the readings and everything. And as I said before, um, DDL software uh, can be used in uh, many different ways, but uh, um, a, a my point is to show you how to uh, understand it better because many of you want, want to know how to use this tool um, a little better than what you know and, and it takes a lot of effort to understand this tool because there is many different options what you can do on it but uh, it depends on what you are going to inspect that's the reason why selecting the specific readings that you want to see is easier because that way you are going to focus on what you actually want to see um, the uh, DDL software is going to be the easiest way to find a problem but in this case as I showed you at the beginning we didn't have any fold codes so when you don't have any fold codes you have to understand how the system works you have to understand how everything works and, 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 and you have to start like thinking on how you and, and where you are going to start inspecting things because as I, as I was told before by the previous but by the owners the previous mechanics they were trying to fix this problem and they were using starting fluids and, and, and everything trying to start the engine pumping the uh, primer pump and everything and none of that work they thought there was air inside the system but it takes more than just using a starting fluid to start a vehicle you have to understand where could be the problem if you use a starting fluid and the vehicle doesn't start freeze then you have to start inspecting let's check some things here let's check something there that is how you are going to be able to understand the problems that these machines are having specifically when you don't have uh, a foul coat on them but anyway um, I I just gonna make this video uh, uh, I'm gonna finish over here because uh, there is a lot of things uh, then that can be talked I wanna do a different video explaining other things I wanna try to continue doing videos like this to show you how to use the DDL software science many of you has uh, have uh, requested me that to uh, uh, show you little by little and uh, I want to try to do in the different problems in different ways how to do it and uh, Probably uh, we try to do it in a different way next time so you can understand it better. But anyway um, If you have any questions about this video uh, be sure to comment below and uh, Probably you know the answer for the question too. You can use it the comment uh, the comment section below too to uh, leave the answer to the question that someone else has and um, If uh, you want to send support to the channel, you are more than welcome Check the description of the video where I have details how to uh, send support to my channel So I can create content like this for you so you can understand these machines a little better and also when I contact me directly, go to Instagram, follow me there, ask me um, what you have on mind. Just be sure to have the information and be patient. Sometimes I have them, too many questions to ask and uh, uh, sometimes I can take a little longer to answer your questions. So, um, so I like the video, be sure to, uh, be sure to uh, share it to anybody that wants to learn more about this machine. And thank you for watching.